Check this out, we can save this totally underexposed image and turn it into this edited version thanks to Lightroom's new AI noise removal. I know I'm late to the party, but still I want to show you this tool, so feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump into it. So that's the raw file and looking at the histogram you can see it's completely underexposed. Usually if you would try to save it, we would go into the basic tab and basically bring up the exposure and try to restore as much detail as possible. I would say something around here looks pretty good, but at this point you can already see even not zoomed into the image, there is noise being introduced in the darkest parts of the image. Although we still have underexposure left, so I would continue by bringing up the shadows and hoping to save those details. Let's see, I think that's a good spot right here with some nicely visible details everywhere. However, let's take a closer look. You can clearly see some very, very strong noise all over the water and of course all over the boardwalk as well. So that is a huge problem. In the end, this would not be a usable image, especially if you want to print that. However, thanks to the new AI noise removal, we can make this look perfectly fine and printable. So how are we doing that? First, I want to do all the basic raw adjustments before we apply the noise removal, because that makes the most sense. First, make all the editing, then do the sharpening and then do a bit of noise removal if needed. So we already have set up the exposure quite well. I do think I want to bring down the highlights to just have a bit more detail in that bright spot in the sky. And I also want to bring up the blacks to introduce some more softness to that image. Maybe like this. All right, exposure looks fine for now, but I don't like the colors at the moment. I want this to be a lot warmer. So what I'm doing here is to just bring up the temperature and I'm going to raise it a lot. I actually think I never raised it this much. All right, and I'm also going to bring up the tint just to introduce some more twilight-like colors like this. All right, looking much better. At this point, I'm introducing a bit of texture and then I'm bringing down the clarity and the dehaze. And this will just further improve this soft look I am aiming for, which I think just works really, really well for those post-sunset images. And of course, we also want to introduce some vibrance. All right, with the base settings out of the way, we can now work on a few areas locally. And therefore, of course, we want to use a bit of masking. First off, the sky. I'm going to use a simple linear gradient and pretty much cover most of that, like this. I want to make the top part darker, so let's just bring down the exposure slightly. All right, and I'm going to add another linear gradient right away, just not as big as the last one to cover only the top part of the sky. And again, just bring down the exposure and applying two linear gradients like this will give us a very natural fade from the darkest top to the bright bottom part. Then let's also create a sky mask. And reason for me to create a sky mask is because I want to have a bit more saturation in the sky. I also think we could use a bit more clarity to bring out those details in the clouds. So I'm raising the clarity and that looks good to me. Then we want to introduce some glow to this bright spot. And therefore, as usual, I'm using a radial gradient. I'm going to create a thin, but a rather wide one like this. I'm making sure the center is over the brightest spot right there. And in here, let's bring up the blacks. I'm also going to drop the clarity again. And let's drop the dehaze, which is really, really effective as a glow effect in here. And we want to have some color in here as well. So let's bring up the temperature, giving this warmer tone. Just like that. And we can even introduce a specific color by clicking on that box right here. I'm aiming for an orange tone somewhere like this and then bringing down the saturation a notch. All right, that looks great. Then one more thing, I want to add one more linear gradient for the top right part like that and just bring down the temperature, introducing some subtle blue tones to that spot. 
Perfect. That's it for the masking stuff. Now we do a little bit of color grading before applying the noise reduction. So let's do that real quick. For that, I'm heading into the color grading panel because for this shot, I just want to apply some split toning and maybe some calibration later on. Here we can really change the atmosphere of this image. Let's start with the highlights. I want to turn this into a very vibrant sunset shot. So basically set up the hue to something warm. That's a good spot right there. And now I'm really pushing the saturation. All right, that looks awesome. You can see how this will obviously only affect the highlights. We can further work on this look by working on the midtones. Here it's up to you. You could choose a warm color tone again, bringing up the saturation will make it even more intense. However, I think a little bit of color contrast works quite nice here. So I want to set up the hue to something cold. That's looking like a proper spot. However, the saturation is too much for the cold color tones. So let's tone it down quite a bit here. All right, that looks much better. And I want to continue with the blue color tones on the shadows. So let's go into the shadows, set up the hue to something cold again. And again, raise the saturation slightly. Done. You can see the split toning has a huge impact on this image. Now, overall, we might have to tweak the color some more, and I like to do that in the calibration tab. Usually, I'm just using the blue primary hue and saturation, but sometimes that's not enough. Like in this case, this means I'm going to bring up the red primary hue. I'm raising it a lot. I'm also going to bring up the green primary hue. And then just bring up the blue primary saturation. So for me, there is no system to it. I'm just playing around with the sliders until I get something that looks pleasing to me. And now after the color grading, let's do the fun part. You can find Lightroom's new AI noise reduction in the detail tab. As usual, we can apply sharpening as well. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking and introduce some more sharpening. However, Right now, the image is not usable in this state. Adobe made it really, really, really easy to fix that. Usually, we would have to do manual noise reduction, which is still here. You can still apply all the settings you are used to, but to be honest, you don't really need that anymore. All you need to do is one click on denoise. Lightroom then will give you the enhanced preview. This is the enhanced image. And if I click on it and hold down the mouse key, you can see the before version. So here we have a ton of color noise going on. And in the enchanted version, the noise is pretty much completely gone. Let's take a closer look at a different part of the image. Let's say right here at the boardwalk. So here we have the image after the denoise and here before. Again, you can see a ton of noise. The great thing about AI denoise you can clearly see how we are not losing any detail along the edges. We can also take a look at the fence right here before, after. And again, we have all the details we need here. It looks super sharp, but the noise is gone. And that's why this tool is so insanely powerful. So let's go to a darker spot right here. I think there's still a little bit too much noise. So what we can do is to just increase the amount of the noise. Let's bring it up a bit and further get rid of noise. It's that simple. And once you're happy with it, just click on Enchants. This will take a while, but of course it's very worth it. And here we have the image with the denoise applied. Looks perfectly fine and we can now use this image. So that's pretty much it for the tutorial part of this video. Still, I do want to tweak this image some more I'm going to clean it up a bit using some Photoshop. So feel free to stay. What I want to do next is to just right click on the image and go to edit in and choose Photoshop. First, let's duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J. And I want to use that layer to clean up this image. There's a huge flagpole which I need to remove. Therefore, I'm grabbing the lasso tool. And I'm just going to create a rough selection here. Once done, I'm hitting Shift F5 with Content Aware selected. Hit OK. Done. Then there are a few leftover hot pixels which the noise reduction didn't catch. So I'm just using the spot healing brush to get rid of them. 
Also going to get rid of a few sensor spots as you can see. And finally, I also want to get rid of those black poles in the distance because they are just super distracting. I'm just using the spot healing brush for that because this works super easy here. Okay, that looks much, much cleaner. Then I do want to enhance the glow in the sky some more. Therefore, I'm creating a new layer, switch the blending mode to hard light and grab the brush by pressing B. You can see I'm, I have selected a rather warm foreground color, just somewhere in the orange range. And I'm bringing down the brush opacity just slightly. And let's make the brush bigger. And with the brush setup, I'm just painting in here once or twice to add a bit more glow to that bright spot right there in the center. Perfect. At this point, I want to merge everything. So I'm hitting Control Shift Alt E. And with that layer, I'm going to head into the Nick Collection to enhance the color some more. So let's go to Filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. What I want to do here is to use the Brilliance Warmth effect, introducing more warmth to this image. You can see I already have set it up by pushing the saturation and the warmth a bit. So that's the before version. And here's the image with the Brilliance Warmth filter applied. However, I want to add another filter. And I'm going with the classical soft focus, which will help with the dreamy look. Under the method drop down, I'm going to choose soft focus free. And I'm going to bring down the strength a bit, just like that. And maybe even the brightness. I think that looks great. So let's apply it like this. Done. And that's it for editing this image and saving it using AI noise removal in Lightroom. So as you can see, with this new tool, you can save pretty much everything, even super unexposed shots like this. And it's made very, very easy thanks to AI. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.